Quiet on set. Picture is up. All right, roll sound. Rolling. Roll cameras. Cams rolling. And three, two. Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome to Hank's Think Tank. I got a real neat guest in here today. Somebody I've been trying to get in. Um, it's been a little difficult, but we finally pulled it together. I've got Dr. Jeff Burke. He is the superintendent of the Splendora Independent School District. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what's been going on with the active shooter thing. And uh, we're going to try to put our community's mind at ease and let you guys know that guys like this guy are on top of it. The police are on top of it. And we understand what the situation is and we're going to take care of it. So good morning, Dr. Burke. How are you today? I'm doing well, Hank. Thanks for having me on today. No problem. Um, you know, we just went through a terrible, terrible thing in Uvalde. And, uh, you know, that hits real close to home because it's here in Texas. And it was so widely publicized. And it, it, I think it really sparked a lot of emotion in people. And so I wanted to have this conversation. But I, what I didn't want to do was get into the Second Amendment thing because I think that's been overdone already. And everybody knows where we are with that. And, and I didn't want to get into the fact that, you know, our society is producing people who would do something like that. That's another conversation altogether. Mm -hmm. So really what I wanted to do was stick with some of the specifics on what Splendor Independent School, School District is doing and uh, what, what your thought process is and what the state of Texas is doing to help you guys out. So uh, why don't we start just... Briefly, how long have you been with uh, SBI or SISD? So I uh, took the job in February of 2017. Okay. So I'm coming up on my six-year anniversary wow. uh, next February. So already. it has been. It has yeah. been. It's been a great place. Continues to be a great place. Just uh, honored to serve here. And uh, it's a great fit for my family and for me. Um, I've spent time in about six different districts. And uh, I feel like this is this is home for us and yeah. we really enjoy being here especially in the midst of all the growth and oh yeah you know there's a lot of good opportunities coming our way I mean for some it might be you know a little scary uh, the amount of growth that's coming but but we do feel like you know it, it is here and so we're doing everything we can to make sure that we're ready for that so yeah you've got a really big job ahead of you with growth <laughs> We do. So, yeah, we do. I don't envy you on that one because well, I don't know how you would even begin to start planning for something like that. Yeah, and I, unfortunately, I, you know, prior to being in Spindora, I was in two pretty fast growth school districts in Georgetown ISD and then Alvin ISD, which is okay. Alvin ISD back in 2011-ish uh, to 2014. We were there when we were growing about 1,200 students a year. And so, of course, I wasn't the superintendent, but I was, uh, you know, involved in a lot of the planning and things like that. So there's a lot of resources that we have that can help us. Uh, you know, right now we're just trying to, you know, be attuned to the market right. uh, with the developers. But we have a lot of good developers that are that are working with the school district, and, and we feel like we're well positioned for that. So we've been working on that for the last three to four years because we knew it was coming. Great. Fantastic. And I also, you know, serve as chair of the East Montgomery County Chamber Board. Okay. So I'm also involved in, and have a good insight uh, from that perspective as well. So oh, yeah, that really helps. It does. And, and that really gives does. you a great handle on the growth. <laughs> You know, yes. So from di from different perspectives, right. I would imagine. Right. So um, getting into, <clears throat> you know, the violence that's happening in schools here lately. Have you ever been in, in a school or, or have you been a member of a board or anything where something like that has happened? Maybe not an active shooter, but just just an encounter of some sort. That's pretty Fortunately, bad. no. I mean, okay. I've been a part of, like I said, six different school districts. And so we've certainly had threats and, um, you know, Facebook things that have happened or, mm -hmm. you know, just this past year we had kids, you know, airdropping photos of guns, but they turned out to be stock photos. So unfortunately we've had a lot of, you know, uh, situations that are rumors and things like that, that we have to right. address and, and, and be prepared for. Fortunately, I've not been involved in, in one of those things. It's really is our worst nightmare. Right. right? Um, you know, with, and, and unfortunately it happens far too often. Um, yeah after santa fe and and parkland i think there was this heightened sense of anxiety and so you know a lot of school districts took you know a lot of steps uh internally externally to to shore up the safety and security of their schools and mm -hmm. now i think with with the other one in new valley that just happened uh buffalo highland park all that i think you know that right. anxiety is 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 back it never really left you know mm -hmm. our our thoughts and in, in mind and um uh, and planning but you know, I think for the community and for, you know, the, the nation at large, it's it's heightened again. And so. Yeah, it's odd because I wonder if it's a population thing. Because, like, when I was a kid, or if it's just 
that society has moved in that direction. Because when I was a kid, I mean, I think that school security was probably less than 10% of the overall consideration that those administrators made back then. But you're talking about, you know, late 60s, early 70s. Mm -hmm. And even when I was in school in the 80s and, you know, early 90s, it didn't seem that we had these, you know, until Columbine, really. Yeah, Columbine was was the first major one. You yeah. know, and it's a it's certainly a multifaceted issue, you know, um, right? In, in, with, you know, just lots of different things, societal issues, things in the school. I just think our kids have a lot of pressure on them mm-hmm. these days. Uh, and oh, we yeah. need to be, you know, our world's changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, social media, just all these things, you know, for us. Uh, and I know we'll get into this a little bit, uh, a little bit more. We we really focus on, you know, relationships. Mm-hmm. in our school district making sure that every kid feels connected because i really believe that a lot of this is they don't have this connection in school yeah that's important it really is you know because they did a great job with that when i was up and coming mm-hmm. when i was a kid so I, but i i was lucky i went to school in the heights mm-hmm. elementary and junior high and then moved out to spring branch for my high school years and yeah. and both those were great school districts and the teachers were awesome and yeah i mean there was always a feeling of inclusiveness mm-hmm. and I, i'm I'm glad to hear that because I think that's important. And I think it's hard now for kids because, you know, there's bullying on online and so much, there's just so much competition that wasn't there when we were kids. Right. I mean, our, our competition was in sports. We had competitive yeah. sports and that was it. You yeah. know, other than that, everybody just kind of got along. So. Yeah. And I, you know, I grew up yeah. in, in Sour Lake, Texas. I went to Hardin Jefferson okay. High School yeah. and had a great, you know, public education experience. You know, we didn't have the high stakes testing back right. then right i mean now our kids are learning things in third and fourth grade that we used to learn in junior high and high school oh yeah you know and so i think it's just important that you know the the, the times that we have them that we have our kids that we give them every opportunity to participate in something to be connected because they need connection somewhere right kids are going to find affiliation and connection somewhere Absolutely. we just want it to be in in our in our school in our community so you know we we really place a lot of emphasis on that and our school board's done a great job in supporting that you know we've even looked at student fees making sure there's no barriers for kids to participate Mm -hmm. in things we do because we know that's you know if a kid's engaged in something if he's coming you know he's going to come to school more or she's going to come to school more and there's going to be more of that that connection yeah and the barriers is also Mm -hmm. a big thing especially out in rural areas like this yeah so yeah used to be rural (laughs) yeah i know it's weird i keep because i keep seeing it as being a rural area but it's really not no not anymore not when we have strange fourteen thousand houses coming yeah yeah and uh from what i hear back in the terrenos area three hundred thousand residents over the next few years yes man that's just unbelievable mm -hmm. You know, Montgomery County, really? Well, that's Liberty <laughs> County. You know, so, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, we're mm-hmm. kind of connected. What we happens are. there happens here. It does. It certainly so, affects our traffic yeah. and, and all that. So, All right. So, um, you know, there's a lot going on with, with the whole active shooter thing now. And I know that um, it's a hot topic in the media. It's a hot topic even with the state of Texas. I don't know about the Texas Education Agency and how they're looking at things. But you had mentioned in an earlier conversation that there was some funding that had come down. And let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, now you've had, you've got a little bit of funding and there's something you can do with it. What are you guys looking at doing? So we, the state just announced, um, you know, we were going to get 105 million across the state, not just, not here. Okay. Right. We'll get a portion of that just to, you know, help with mental health uh, resources, uh, you know, safety alert training for police officers, things like that. You know, about three or four years ago, and I think it was after Santa Fe, you know, our board made a commitment that we would have an officer on every single campus, right? Okay. So we, we, we are working towards that. That's a good idea. You know, part yet, I mean, it's it's worked out well for us too, because traditionally, you know, you, you have your SROs or, or police officers on your secondary campuses, and then they kind of rotate in between elementaries. Mm-hmm. But we've, you know, we've staffed a, them at every campus so that, you know, that we have that dedicated person, because it's not just about, <clears throat> you know the the safety and security of the campus it is about that too but it's also about building those relationships with those kids right because a lot of the tips and things that we get come from our students mm-hmm. right and they need to know that that relationship is there uh, that safety is there for them to report something and so i think that's always got to be part of the of the equation as well so we we made that commitment several years ago um you know i'm, I'm a little worried right now about uh, police officer shortage just like teacher officer te- sure. teacher shortages yeah. that we're experiencing but our chief of police, Colin Weatherly, has uh, done a great job at making sure that we're staffed appropriately. We have an evening shift officer. 
uh, that goes and, and monitors uh, after school activities. So, so safety is a, a big part of, of what drives okay. us as a school district. Uh, you know, both both the uh, facility piece and also making sure that we're building those relationships. Yeah, it reminds me of the old beat cop mentality. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and actually, I think things were better when there were. You know, when I was a kid and we lived in the Heights, we actually had a a police officer that walked our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. He was a beat cop. And, uh, you know, he wasn't all militarized and didn't have the big weapons and all that. He, I think he carried one of those sticks, a baton. Right. But he would talk to everybody, and everybody knew him. You know, it was mm-hmm. Officer Bob. I don't remember his name, actually. But, but he was like Officer Bob, and everybody knew him. And he had a relationship with the community. And I think that was really important. So, yeah, if you can get these guys to build relationships with these kids, that's going to be your key to success right, right there. Right. You know? And bring back that beat cop mentality. I think that's a great idea. I mean, it, it is. I mean, yeah. developing that, you know, that that personal and professional relationship with teachers, sure. with staff, with administrators, community. Yeah. So that they know that our community and parents, I mean, we, we are entrusted with their greatest, you know, yeah. their, their greatest resource, their need, you know, they're, and we're responsible for the safety of their children, right? Sure. I mean, we're responsible for, the, for their children and their taxes, right? So how many police are there in, in the Splendora Police Department? So we have six in, campuses. So okay. we have, uh, and we're in the process of, we, uh, I think we're fully hired up. I'll, I'll need to talk to Chief Weatherly this week just to okay. make sure we were looking for a couple more. But we have a chief uh, who is not assigned to a campus. We have an operations a sergeant uh, that's not assigned to a campus, but he does fill in if we have somebody out. Okay. We have an after school uh like evening shift officer and then we have a, an officer on every campus so that'd be six seven eight nine okay that we have so pretty robust police department. yeah that's a pretty good size um, police department yes yeah so and so i assume that they are especially now doing a whole lot of training and things like that they are and they have been yeah. you know we did our first reunification drill this past spring uh, okay. we work with faith family church uh, right in kingwood mm-hmm. um and so you know in the event of and like we were talking about in an earlier conversation you know we're faced with a lot of potential threats, not just active shooter, right? So mm-hmm. if we were to have a train derailment or anything that would basically cause us to have to reunify after mm-hmm. an event, if there was an evacuation, <clears throat> you know, we, Chief Weatherly established this relationship with Faith Family. It's right off of uh, Kingwood Drive, like at the okay. Kingwood Drive exit. Mm-hmm. And so we did a practice run uh, with, pre- uh, with a few students from Peach Creek Elementary at the end of the year or in okay. the spring. Uh, and they've been great partners uh, for us because we needed somewhere that had appropriate parking and you know mm-hmm. there's really not a lot of places in Splendor that, that yeah. have that yeah a place to stage yeah, it up yeah a place right. to stage it up and you've got to account for media and you've got to account mm-hmm. for you know uh, good intake and, and it was a good practice for us we we you know learned a lot about things we need to do on the identification piece but to your point a lot of things that, that they're training for right and chief mm-hmm. has spent his entire summer you know visiting other districts looking at different you know, opportunities and, and uh, systems, and, and okay. that, that'll be a huge part of our back-to-school piece. Uh, okay. We'll be not only getting our officers up to speed, which they are, mm-hmm. but also making sure that our staff understands their responsibilities as well, right? And I think it's, we had this, um, <clears throat> we've had a couple of roundtable round table discussions with legislators over the past month or so. Okay. Starting with Will Metcalf's office, uh, and then also with, uh, with Congressman Brady's office okay. um, in the past month. And you know, just a lot of things that we've talked about, right? Making sure that, that we all continue the great relationship that the school districts in Montgomery County have with the, the various law enforcement agencies. Mm-hmm. You know, most of us have our own police departments or we contract with our constable's office or sheriff's office, but we have a great relationship with DPS, you know, Sheriff Henderson, right. his folks. I mean, they, so there is a, you know, the city departments, Splendora, you know, Patton Village would branch. For us particularly, we, we have that great relationship, and so they've always been willing to, and then, of course, Precinct 4 in mm-hmm. Rowdy's office, we've, they've always been more than accommodating. If we've got an officer out or if we've got something, they always stop by and help. And, and you know what I think a brilliant thing is, especially for this community, is the centralized dispatch system that we yes, have. Yes, absolutely. So the everything radios. gets dispatched through Rand Henderson's office. Mm-hmm. And so that, you know, that way everyone knows, and everyone knows what their component individual piece is and i think that makes it a whole lot better than a lot of places yeah you know because in a lot of places there's several different dispatch offices and it, those calls need to be routed and mm-hmm. then maybe not all that information gets through question i have is do you know if there's a federal component to all this is there is there a federal agency that's helping with any of this training or 
Well, I think that was part of the conversation we were having with Congressman Brady. Mm -hmm. And I think they're probably just getting some information from different school districts and law enforcement agency. I don't know of anyone that oversees that. You know, for us, it's really the Texas School Safety Center uh, that that kind of hands out the expectations and trainings and, and things like that. Yeah, I, will, I think just, eventually yeah. FEMA or somebody's going to get involved. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think so. I mean, I think it's just one of those things where, you know, obviously it's a it's a hugely important issue, and, and mm-hmm. I think we all just need to make sure that that we're that we have the appropriate resources that we need. And I'll right. tell you one kind of one aside story. So, a couple of years ago, maybe two or three years ago, um, <clears throat> myself and and a couple of my cabinet members and uh, some of the board members were at the Capitol. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was Capitol Day, and I think we were there. Uh, it was Montgomery County Capitol Day. So okay. most of the people cool. from Montgomery County were there. Yeah. And we had an issue at the junior high where a kid had mistakenly gotten a hold of a radio. Mm-hmm. And there was a, like that, they were obviously just messing around, but we didn't know that at that point. And there was a kind of a threat made. And we must have had five or six different agencies respond within like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and sure. we, were all out of, yeah. we were all out of the district. And so it was nice to see you know, that response as well. And our principal at the time, Kent Broussard, handled it really well. But, you know, it was just one of those things where, you know, when, when something happens, they're all going to come. Right. Yeah, that's you a know? good thing. And I bet response times have been greatly reduced, especially oh, in light yes. of what's been going on. Yes. Well, you, you just, know, because I think back a couple of years ago, the average response time was 14 minutes. Not out here, but the average right. for the for the country was 14 minutes from the time the first call was made. Mm-hmm. And I can guarantee that, that in this part of town, that's going to be brought way down. It is. I mean, I would so, say, yeah. you know, we would have Patton Village and local, you know, constables. I mean, everybody mm-hmm. here would be here so quickly. And yeah. it helps also having that officer on every campus. Right. And I think that's, you know, what you brought up, that <clears throat> response time, excuse me. I think that's why we've seen the preponderance of some of the Marshall programs mm-hmm. across the state. And, it, you know, and to some extent it makes a lot of sense when you don't have those those agencies readily available. Right. Uh, for those districts and, and rural areas to to explore that, you know, and I know you and I in an earlier conversation talked about that as well. And mm-hmm. you know, our board at this point, and we're just considering a lot of things uh, sure. in terms of that. So, uh, of course, some of the stuff that we're considering, I can't get into mm-hmm. uh, today, but uh, just that's you know, I wanted to comment on that as well. Okay, fantastic. And then uh, you're also looking at like third party uh, lockdown devices for the individual. Yeah, we, we've such. had uh, that in the past. We've had what we call barricades and uh, uh-huh. Chief Weatherly's looking at different things. Again, that's part of that okay. conversation where we're looking at different protocols. And, and um, mm-hmm. we had a, a, our tacit um, leadership meetings, at the Texas Association of School Administrators last week. And there were a few companies there that, that were offering some things as well. And part of that funding that the governor yeah, I bet by so now, now there's some good devices yeah, there out there. Are. Yeah, there you know? are. And uh, so we're, we're looking at a lot of different things, things that work for us, that okay. work with the different agencies, too. You have to consider mm-hmm. that as well. Right. You know, if uh, the, the amount of training that would have to be done across agencies here, I think it's important mm-hmm. that we're all communicating, and it would probably help if we're using some similar things as well. Right. So we're, we're working on all that, and we'll, we'll have that in place before school starts. And I would imagine that the landscape of this whole thing changes so much that you just can't really knock it down to one thing. Oh, like no. you can't say, okay, well, we're going to have drills for this and drills for that because that may not work, yeah. you know, depending on, on what's happening on the ground. Yeah, I think it's just like anything else, right? Um, you have to have a culture of safety, mm-hmm. right, in your in your district. And we've talked about that a lot. Right. Um, and I want to give credit to Tim Harkrider when we were at the Metcalf Roundtable. You know, Tim talked about this a lot as the superintendent in Willis. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, he was the first one that I heard that had mentioned that just making sure that, you know, every every staff member, every kid, everybody that works in that district, you know, they understand their responsibility. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you see uh, an open door, close it if you do that. And so a lot of our training this this uh, summer is going to be focused on creating that culture of safety and taking it, you know, not that we didn't take it seriously before, but I think it's everybody has a responsibility. Right. Right. Not just the police officers, not just the administrators. You know, it's being at your duty stations. It's making sure that you're monitoring things. Right, um, everybody from the custodians on. Everybody. I would imagine. Everybody. Yeah. So I think that's a huge part of our focus moving forward. Um, so, yeah, that's Great. some of the things we're looking at. And I know well. I, I saw a program about a week ago. There was a psychologist, and he was talking about the fact that there needs to be some sort of awareness training done for mm-hmm. everybody from custodians up to be able to recognize 
an individual that just doesn't look right. Something's not right about this. Right. You know, or a vehicle that's parked in a different location that should be or something like that. Yeah. So I would imagine y'all are going to have things like that throughout the year. Yeah. And from this point forward. We've talked about that as well. And, and mm-hmm. you know, just as we, excuse me, I'm going to drink a water. As we grow as a district, right, that, mm-hmm. that's going to bring new challenges too. And it's not going to be just, hey, I'm going to, you know, pop over to this campus or this campus, you know, for right. like, if, I, you know, for example, <clears throat> my daughter goes to Timberlakes, she's in kindergarten, so this would be a first grader. So this wouldn't really be an issue. But if it's like, hey, I have a high school kid, my mom works over at Piney Woods, for example, I'm just going to pop over there. We've mm-hmm. just got to be more vigilant, right, mm-hmm. about that sort of thing. And so I think as we're heading into the school year, our parents just have to understand that, that we, you know, we, it's not small town Splendor anybody, anymore. Right. right. I mean, we, we have a lot of new families coming in. We just want to make sure that their kids are safe. So it'll change some of the things that we're doing with parent nights and back to school. And so we're talking about some of those things. Maybe maybe uh, on Meet the Teacher Night, we bring certain grade levels up so it's smaller okay. smaller crowds and so that we're able to keep an eye. Sure. But again, you know, uh, that's one of those things. We don't want it to, to seem like, hey, you know, you can't come up and see your, mm-hmm. your child or this performance. So there's a balance there. And we're, we're making sure that, you know, we know that it takes all of us to raise these kids, right? And so we want parents to be on campus. They just, I hope that they understand that we've got to tighten up on, on some of our, on some of our protocols. Sure. You yeah, know, that's and that natural. comes with communication and, mm-hmm. and things like that. So we're, we're talking about a lot of things. Yeah. And when it comes down to protecting your kids, you shouldn't have a problem with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So that's a great thing. And I would think that the new schools, because I know y'all are having to build new schools, I would mm-hmm. think that the architects and engineers that are designing those schools are trying to design security built right in. Yes. You know, that's, that's going to be the way to do it. Yes. And we, we yeah. had some security, what they call security charrettes after Parkland mm-hmm. and Santa Fe, where we did talk about some of those things. So a lot of those things are, are in the designs now, but again, going back and, and really uh, tightening some of those things up and again, not getting into some of those uh, design issues right now, but right. yeah, that's a part we've already had conversations with our architects about that as well. Fantastic. Well, it sounds like you guys were on top of it, and I'm glad. But the the point that I also wanted to try to make with this show is that the community needs to also assist. And it's you know we talked mm-hmm. about inclusion and things like that before. So the parents need to be a little bit more involved, and they need to talk to their kids and let them know they're safe in Splendor schools, and everything's going to be all right. Yes. And uh, you know to to have a relationship with these police officers that are on campus, and talk to those guys and get to know them. And trust them. You know, those are the guys that can help you out. And, uh, you know, it, it's through efforts like that that are going to create even more safety and just a happier environment for everybody, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's our hope, too. And I'll share another story. <clears throat> Pardon me. After Parkland and Santa Fe, uh, Representative Metcalf brought a couple of his staff out to our campus, to our mm-hmm. high school campus, and we had a little. You know, just conversation with some of our folks, some of our students mm-hmm. were in that as well. And I remember one of our students at that time, she was a junior, you know, uh, talked about the it's just important as important about the relationships inside the building mm-hmm. amongst the kids and the teachers as Absolutely. it is about yeah. hardening the facility and things like that. You know, we're a uh, we've we're a Capturing Kids Hearts National Showcase District, one of, I think, 12 in the nation. Uh, what that means is we put a lot of uh, effort and, and resources towards building those appropriate relationships between kids and students okay. um, at every campus. And so I think that's also a huge part of that equation, right? And and making sure that, you know, we all have to have this sense of heightened vigilance, mm-hmm. you know, and, and um, you know, some kids are dressing differently these days than, than, than they did when we were in school, right? And right. so just yeah. making sure that people feel accepted, okay. right, for, for who they are and but also understanding that we're in a, a very conservative community. There's a lot of, um, of issues that arise there. Sure. But just making sure that our kids know that they're welcome, they're valued, they're loved, right? And okay. that, that, that we want to provide a place for them. And then, you know, just making sure that our, that our parents, we have a, that good line of, of two-way communication with our parents mm-hmm. so that they feel uh, safe, you know, that they feel that their kids are safe, that they're getting the appropriate information that we have. We have a, a great communications department that sends out, um, a lot of, of positive messages about our school district, but also in the event of a, 
of an emergency. And since I've been here, there have been quite a few, right? Mm -hmm. A couple of hurricanes. Right. You know, Chopper Storm Imelda. We got hacked by the Russians one time. <laughs> did you really? We did. <laughs> or awesome. by some group. I don't know if it's the Russians. I don't want to. Probably you know, the Russians. Probably. Uh, yeah. Just in terms of uh, just some cyber attacks and things like that. And so okay. we've had to communicate to parents across a wide variety of of issues and, and they've been great mm -hmm. i mean that's, and do you do that by text no we, we do it by text email uh, social media okay um so we have a, a very you know solid protocol about how we do that even in the event of an emergency where we don't have all the information we'll mm -hmm. do a an initial announcement and say 30 minutes we will get back to you within 30 minutes okay so i think that's what it is right? and, we, and that is bilingual for our, yes okay, it is great. it is Fantastic. absolutely um you know and our parents have been really good about understanding that and i think in this situation they're just going to have to understand that we like i said earlier you know we may take a, some more measures and protocols and we had to do that during covid sure right and so i think our you know everybody kind of is used to that mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that we're doing it for the right reasons and in the right ways okay. right fantastic so, yeah all right so if i'm a parent and i just have a lot of concerns mm -hmm. um who can i call at Splendora? yeah i would say first of all call their call their campus principal that's the first okay. um that's the first person that i would suggest they call they could mm -hmm. call chief weatherly they could call me they could call you know our director of student services diana archer or something mm -hmm. we you know we have a our communications department right we have an anonymous reporting system that they could uh that they could report something and obviously excuse me and that okay. tip line is what gets us a lot of our tips right okay great uh, from our kids from our parents and, and we have a lot of parents that pay attention and say hey i heard this at the baseball game or i heard this at little league is this mm -hmm. true and, and so i think we've you've got to establish that relationship right well in advance of anything happening so that when when something god forbid does happen or should happen you know that you don't waste time figuring out well i should have sent this message out we have that protocol already established so awesome yeah that's great Okay, yeah, and it's important. I mean, parents shouldn't keep their kids out of school because they're concerned. They should go to that right. that institution and mm -hmm. have a conversation, you know, yeah. and take a look around, I guess, if they need mm -hmm. to, you know, and find out what's going on. And, and we try to share as much information as we can, mm -hmm. right? Anytime we have to send out a message, it goes through about 70 different iterations, right, oh, between sure. me and the communications yeah. department and whoever else is involved. And so I know that we don't always give the specific information that we may or may not have at the time, just for mm -hmm. various reasons. And, you know, I was, people wanted a response immediately these days. I mean, oh, I like, bet. Hey, yeah. you know, I need to know right now what's happening. It takes mm -hmm. some time for us to gather the facts and figure out what that looks like. We're certainly not trying to hide anything. It's just there are, you know. Yeah, if things are changing mm -hmm. rapidly, it's, yes. hard, it's hard to gather those facts sometimes. Right. It is. So, yeah, you know, I can understand that. Well, Dr. Berger, I appreciate you coming out and uh and talking to me and and putting the community's mind at ease i think we're gonna have a great school year coming up this year and uh, i'm looking forward to it are we gonna win any football games? Well, i hope we are i hope we <laughs> win in everything I, and i think just i was talking with one of my assistant superintendents the other day and just like i feel really good about this school year uh the past two to three years it's been covid 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 yeah and it's yeah. you know Hopefully it's been hugely disruptive oh and, God, well i think people are more just out. we're living with it now right sure but yeah. it you know last year i think we had high hopes about how we were starting the year out and then we were hit with another wave mm -hmm. so i mean i don't think that's going away but <clears throat> again i really feel good about about uh about this school year starting off and and there's a lot of a lot of things to be excited about in splendor isd we're, we're i think it's going to be great and i'm confident well thank so, you and yeah. i feel much better myself now i don't have any kids in school all my kids are growing up and they're already married and mm -hmm. got homes and jobs and all that but they're going to have kids soon, and those kids are going to end up in our schools too. So I want to make yeah. sure they're safe. Well, we take what so. we do very, very seriously. Right? We know we have a responsibility to serve this community, and that's kind of how we approach things in our district is we're here to serve. Fantastic. And so that means listening, and it means you know being available to do things like this because I do want our community to feel at ease, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in an open carry society, so these things are not 100% yeah. preventable, but, right. but we're doing everything we can to keep their children our children safe my kids go to our schools too um so you know I, I know that we take that you know that that is the most important thing right is making sure that our kids are safe and our staff all right well there you have it guys so uh you know dr burke and his staff they're taking care of it and uh you can always give those guys a call if you need to you can call the splendora independent school district police talk to them if you have concerns let them know you know don't keep your kids out of school because you're concerned have a conversation, get involved, 
roll your sleeves up, go back to school yourself, check it out a little bit. So uh, I'm Hank Vat. This is Hank's Think Tank, and I guess we're gone.